And so let's get it started. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This is Friday Connect. We're here every single week, every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you put that in your calendar. You are welcome to come every single week. And we talk about everything real estate, real estate training for real estate agents. This is specifically for you to grow your business in all aspects, whether it be marketing, whether it be lead generation, whether it be growing your team, whether it be you growing your and building a real estate portfolio. Next week's a really good one. We're bringing on one of the top real estate investors in Southern U.S. I mean, the whole Southern U.S. And he's had over many, many multiple millions in, 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 in his portfolio. And he's the best per person to learn from. So make sure you click on that link that Jacob posted about Friday Connect and join us. Jacob and I co-host this event. We This is all about sharing information, growing. We also have a, a marketing uh, agency called Mift Media. And the reason that all born out of is our frustration with all these overnight success, marketing gurus and people that aren't you know, that what worked for them and they're sharing this, but it's not, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't help anybody else when there isn't structure and strategy that follows people in their business. So Jacob and I want to be able to provide this. And, and a lot of people in our states, you know, marketing and access to marketing fund isn't on demand. So it's really about being thoughtful about where you're spending your money, ROI, thinking about how to calculate and build a business that's going to work for you. And that's why today is a perfect place for you to be here. And I'm so glad that you're here as we have an actual professional who does for who does this for a living with us. So I'm going to pass this on to Jacob. He's going to do a quick introduction about him. And then we're going to dive right into the interview. So if you have any questions, uh, please keep them with you uh, and and leave them in the chat box and we're going to get to a Q&A portion and we'll answer all of your questions. So there you go. Take it away, Jacob. Yes, I'm so excited to have Juan here. I've met, um, his wife is on our real estate team, but this guy is super uber professional and I've seen his content that he does, even his content production days that he's done for realtors in their studio. So I definitely wanted to have him here because everybody always struggles with how to get started with video. And they think that you have to have all this crazy equipment, this crazy knowledge, and it's just as simple as get started. So I wanted to take a professional that could show you tips and tricks with the stuff that you have right in your hands right now, how you can get started and then slowly upgrade the quality and your video content. And this is super important in today's uh, today's market because the, the real estate market is saturated with realtors. How do you stand out in your market? And so this guy is it. So thank you for being here. We're we're so privileged to have you. So thank you again. You're welcome. I, I honestly I feel very honored. Like I know I've I've seen my wife meet with both of you guys, and she's just like that's always so good. Like it's so good. So like and then like on the back end I see her like grow and her her verbiage change. Like there's just a more I can do this personality versus like. I'm waiting for something to happen. So like, I feel very, I feel very lucky to be her content creator. Um, and then I know she feels very lucky because I have a lot of equipment that she gets the benefit off of. Um, but I've been a professional content creator for a couple of years now. Um, been able to do this. Honestly, I've been able to travel a lot of entrepreneurs all over the world. I've been able to work with Lisa Nichols, who's an amazing motivational speaker and other speakers just like her. Um, and it's crazy that all of this kind of just started with being the bad skateboard kid uh, amongst all my kids, all my, all my friends in high school. Like I was just the worst skateboarder amongst all of these amazing skateboarders. And so they were like, hey, take the camera and take photos of us. Basically, their way of saying you suck at this capture us doing good stuff. And so I would like do that. And eventually that became my passion, this ability to tell stories and this ability to like capture these moments and then shooting weddings and just involving through the, the progression of as a videographer. And I kind of landed in this social media content marketing for, for businesses, for speakers, for events, and the ability to capture those moments and relive those moments for years to come has been really beneficial. So I'm excited that um, this year I, I quit my full, my full-time job and now I'm a full-time business owner um, awesome. and it allows us to travel and allows us to do a lot more through this. And so it's been really cool to kind of see this progression grow. Um, but I get the, I get this question all the time. What should I start with? What camera should I get? Uh, what do I need to do? What stuff do I need to buy? And it's as simple as we all have a phone in our pocket. Yep. Yeah. There's things that you can do to make this better. Um, but we all have an amazing phone in our pocket, or at least you should have an amazing phone. It is 2023. Um, if you're still working with a flip, then that's just on <laughs> um, Maybe you just don't like smartphones, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, you, you should be able to start with your phone and be able to branch off of that from the very beginning. And so um, the, the couple things that I always tell people is like, 
audio is king. Yeah, you have good video, but audio is king. And so my first recommendation is to at least buy a really good microphone for your phone. Um, and there's one that just came out earlier this month. It's called the Rode Wireless Me. And I think I, I sent Jacob the link and we have a whole like PDF that you guys can go from there and click the link and buy it. Um, but it's a really cool tool because now you can set your phone up, you know, 10 feet away from you and still have this amazing clean audio, um, which is 50% of the view, viewing experience is audio. And so even for my production, when I do big production stuff, I do a microphone on the talent and then I do a boom microphone. And then I have an on-camera microphone. So there's three sources of audio that I do just in case they rub this microphone wrong or this microphone goes bad because of a cable. Um, I have some type of backup because audio is so important. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a, a quick little tip and a quick little bio about me. But I know this is a q and I can, I can do a lot of talking. So, yeah, hey, I know you're in good company. So before <laughs> yeah. we dive into all that and kind of structure this, for different levels of where people are at. Let, let's talk about why content is important, especially in the real estate market. Why do you think video content is the most important content to put out? Well, one, I think everyone is tired of being sold to. There's a huge like wave of like people are tired of being sold to. Um, I mean, you, you, all of us done it. We all scroll through TikTok or Instagram. And as soon as we see that ad, it's swipe up. <laughs> Unless it's something that like, you know, the smartphone's been listening to us and it's like, I have been wanting to buy dumbbells. Let me look at this. Like, but other than that, like you're like swirling up. You, you don't want to be captured that you're on your phone because you want to learn something. You want to have fun. You're on the evening. So you're decompressing from the days of work. So you just want to laugh. Um, so like people are tired of, of the buying, buying, sell, sell, sell stuff mentality. And so like, but having content on your platform that is educational, teaching people, especially with realtors, I think this is um, the more I've learned through this with my wife becoming a realtor, like you guys need this more than anybody because the overall goal is to sell a house, but yet the market is tired of being sold to. So it's like this weird balance of like, I want to sell, but I also don't want to seem too salesy. And that to me is the perfect opportunity because you you're the expert in your fear field. So if you can start giving tips on, hey, what are some tips for first home buyers? What are some um, myths about first home buyers? And I'll use first home buyers because that is me, my only knowledge of real estate. Um, <laughs> and I know there's so much more, but like, you know, like how much is down payment for first home buyers? You know, what are the questions that I should ask as a first home buyer? Like those are things that you guys know off the top of your head because you get your aunts and uncles every day to ask you these questions. And you just know them. And so like being able to be on social media and educate your people and have fun. There's so many different fun reels out there right now with audios that you can just steal and use. Um, but being able to just get on your phone and, hey, here's a quick little informational stuff is so important because it's going to separate you from every other realtor that is just doing a sell, 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 sell mentality. And right, so, yeah, right. I think social media is huge right now for that. Exactly. And a lot of people overthink things. Like I got to have these like super, I got to talk super long. I could do all these, even just like these trending things that are happening are great. And people overthink it. You live in an area, you don't just sell houses. So you live in an area that has, you know, restaurants, like you guys always promote, you know, Galveston and Bagel Company, all those things. Yeah. Like people want to know that. And when they're ready to buy a house, you're top of mind because they're following you because you know everything about your community. So yeah. that's great content to have. And one thing I want to know is like, so you have a real estate agent with limited video experience. Maybe they're not super techie. How can they get started? You kind of alluded to this, you know, you know, pull out your phone, but give them like a quick, quick setup that they can pull out their phone. They can get started and kind of what basic equipment they can start out with, you know, with a wireless mic, things like that. So they can, they can get started with that. And then we'll dive into more of the kind of video editing aspects of this. To, to me, I think the most basic thing um, you can buy it right now for 18 bucks or 20 bucks on Amazon um, is just a tripod. To me, the basic thing that you could start off right now with is setting up your phone while you walk around the, the house or while you're meeting with a, a client. Um, obviously, don't record the audio because all that stuff is previous to you guys, but record the clip and just you know use that as your story. Hey, made a, met an amazing client today. I can't wait to get them in this home. Like, it just shows you doing what you're doing. Um, right. And so a lot of us do life and we have this amazing life that we get to live, especially with, with going around different houses, different towns and showing us stuff like you have the ability to do that. 
especially what Jacob said, showing the community, like it's an opportunity to go eat at this restaurant you've been wanting to go. And now because you're making content for it, it's a tax write-off. Like these are things that you get to do and go around your town and just record you doing it. You don't have to worry about any audio that's talking. You don't have to worry about any type of teaching aspect, just showing what you're doing and then having a caption with fun music or maybe an inspirational real quote. Like that, that is the most basic thing you can do right now. Um, and I do it all the time for myself um, to, you know, just with the flat tire that I had today, I quickly got on my phone. Hey guys, I was supposed to be somewhere and I'm running late, but I just grabbed an Uber and I'm such a good spirits like type of thing. And then while in the Uber, I recorded the guy driving. Like those are something that tells the story of what my day was like as a content creator. And so like it helps people like, know, and trust me, which is the biggest thing that anybody who's on social media, they preach is like, no trust. And so, exactly. yeah, just on the basic level, just setting up your camera and grabbing your environment, what you're doing. That, that's on the basic level. And that's great. That's great information because a lot of people we have, I don't like to be on camera. Or I don't like to talk. You don't necessarily have to talk. Just yep. record your day as it's going. And, you know, just encouraging people because some people relate. Like right now in Houston, it's super crappy weather. So you'd be stuck in outside right now, flat tire, things like that. And just show people, you know, life goes on mindset encourage somebody maybe they're they're having a bad time but also promoting your local area so content happens all around it's just a matter if you're capturing you're paying attention yeah. and using that so it's great so the biggest you know, thing so, right, we have our phone we have a basic microphone we can use i mean there's there's some on on amazon for 30 bucks and get those little yeah. lapel mics that plug into your iphone and they work great you can always upgrade later as things are going so mm -hmm. Now that we we have we're starting to record, we have our tripod, all of those things. What are some good apps, or at least one good app that you think that is good to edit the videos in? So, so that way, on all the social media platforms instead of editing on each one. So there's two. One of the microphones that I really recommend. It is a little more expensive, but the quality is amazing. Um, it's 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 a standard brand. I mean, not a standard. It's a standard professional brand. Uh, it's called Rode, and they have the wireless Mies. So it's literally goes on the back of your phone, plugs in through your lightning port or your USB-C, whatever the phone you got. Um, and then the transmitter goes on you and your record. And the great thing about that is that it has an app that comes with it for your phone. So you're able to control your volumes for your microphone, but you're also able to use it for video. Um, and it's really cool because it really helps you dial in some of your settings if you want to get into that. Um, so that's a really good app to use. The other one that I, I know a lot of people like is InShot. Um, it's it's a it's an app for your phone or your iPad. Um, it's InShot. Now, if you have a if you're doing a lot of it on your laptop, some Apple computers come with iMovie. You can use that free software. I don't know what the Windows software is because sadly I'm an Apple person, so I don't know a lot of that stuff. Um, but there there are definitely free apps out there to do that. I always recommend people to buy into your subscription um, just because there are features that you might like in those, especially trying to learn something and having like someone say, Oh, you can't do that. Cause you don't have the, you have the free version. Like it's very frustrating. And as much as you can get rid of those small frustrations that stop you, the better. And so I think InShot is 18 bucks for the year or something like that. Super nothing. I mean, that's like three cups of coffee in a day. Um, so doing that would be way better than having three cups of coffee, unless you're like me, like you need coffee. Um, but being able to, to do that, edit real quick on your phone and then do it is great. The other one is just inside the app. I know TikTok, Instagram, they all have built in um, editing things because their goal is for you to, to use their app. The more users they have, the better they have on their side. And so being able to use the inside app is really huge, um, which is also not bad at all. Like even I use it. Um, and I say that because a lot of people ask me that question. I like, I, I use the professional software man. I'm sorry, I can't help you out. Um, right. but I've been using the in-app one for Instagram, especially for all the stuff that I record with my phone and I'm able to look at it, cut. Okay. I want this. Hey, I want this audio clip to start here and I move it over and then I get to add new clips that I like. And so when I do like travel stuff, I record everything from the moment of leaving my house to the moment I end up at the airport or whatever event we're going to, I record stuff on my phone and that gets edited on my phone and gets sent as a reel on my phone. And crazy enough, those videos get so much more traction than the ones where I'm like sitting down and trying to right. plan it out. It, it's crazy. So speaking of that, so what is some what are some tips that you have for 
realtors to start creating some engaging content and then pair that with maybe some common mistakes to avoid while you're creating content? To, to me, honestly, I don't think there are any common mistakes right now. Um, other than like, oh, I left my finger over the camera or bad audio. Like, I don't, I don't think there's any common mistakes. Social media has kind of ruined video. Um, being in the industry for over like 15 years, like it kind of ruined it because now you have people using their phones and zooming in and weird shaky movements and all kinds of stuff. Um, and so it, it feels like it kind of ruined it, but in a good way. Uh, because now it allows everybody to have access to what I love is editing and people can do that and tell stories, what matters to them. And so like, right. for me, we have like the rule of thirds. I have, you can see it now I have proper lighting. So I have a big lighting thing in front of me. I have this lighting, lighting my back. Um, it's a typical two point lighting. I have backdrops. I have a fake plant. Like these are things that I think about as a videographer. You I can't hear him. Hey, I think you cut out. Wife's phone. Can you hear me no, now? There you go. Okay. Yep. It automatically went to my wife's phone as the microphone. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> technology, man. Um, but yeah, I don't think there Sorry. is any limitations. I think people have the op opportunity to start now. The biggest thing that I hear from different people that, that want to work with me is, oh yeah, I have so many videos on my phone and I just never post them. That's a waste. Post that stuff. That stuff can be on your stories. That stuff could be on your um, random video of the end of the year. Um, my biggest thing that I've been trying to coach people is what I'm trying to coin. And so maybe with you guys, it could go further is RVRs, reusable video reels. Um, and I have a stockpile of video reels that I keep on hand. If I'm tired and I don't feel like making a video, I have video while I'm making videos and I record myself, or if someone <laughs> records me doing something, I keep stockpiles of these videos and I'll use it with, oh, I like this audio reel. I'm going to tie it to it. And now I'll get to schedule it, post it, and I'm good. Um, and so two of my videos this week have been stock videos that I just have on my phone. And guarantee you, I will use them next month too, because I just, they're good videos and good videos are good videos. No, that's a good tip because I'm, I mean, in the real estate industry, we get so busy and sometimes content gets pushed to the side. But if you, the, those times that you're recording content, you can record a little extra. Like one, one tip we always give with our Groovy platform is while you're out in restaurants, everywhere you go, just start recording. Start yeah. taking pictures. So that day when you need content, you could just go to your phone. It literally just happened to my husband. He's like, I can't, I don't have time to record this week because our car broke down. We had to take it to the shop and we were just out a day. And yeah. so he was sitting there waiting. He's like, well, I, I remember recording at this restaurant. So I'll post that. Yep. And so it works. So stockpiling, that is, that's a huge tip. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, huge. Yeah, we're coming down. So I want to get these last questions in so everybody can start asking questions, okay. um, especially while you're here. So we kind of talked about this a little bit, but what's a few tips, maybe even content related that agents can use the video content to actually stand out in this crowded market? What will make them kind of stand out a little bit from the so competition? I sent you that PDF. I don't know, or I think it was a screenshot. I don't know if you have that on hand. Um, this has been mm -hmm. my go-to thing. Uh, let me see. Did I send it to you? If uh, I did, you sent me a video package. I did send you a video package and two PDFs. I didn't send it to you. Let me, um, you can share your screen. So go ahead. If you want to quickly share it, just be careful. You might want to open in a tab quickly because it'll look like you're zooming out. Let so me try to do this. Okay. So first time using this, share, share screen. And yep. I'm sharing my. Sorry, guys, trying to figure out this thing at the same time. Okay. Let me know if you guys can see it. Okay, perfect. So this is my matrix that I use for people that hire me. This is, we meet over like three or four Zoom calls and I help coach them to do this. This is going off the factor of like, no trust. Um, so these are samples on the top, first home buyers, new constructions. Um, these are topics that you are the expert at. So you can fill these in however you want. 
the bottom part is topic focus. So first home buyers, what are some myths about first home buyers? These are common mistakes. Um, what are some myths in new constructions? And these are all everything under the top part where it says sample. Everything from there are things that you can talk about. Promotion. So the bottom part, objections, uh, social proof, promotion. That's your sales part of everything. So that's where you get to kind of push like, hey, this is a new promotion that we got going on for whatever. Um, this is social proof. And again, this is this is where you come in and really fill these boxes because you're the expert. I, I don't know how to talk to it when it comes to real estate stuff. Um, that's why everything is first home buyers. Um, belief shifts. Belief shifts is really huge. This is the, the middle part is like educational. The belief shifts is like, hey, people think that you need to have X, Y, Z before buying X, Y, Z change their belief to, hey, you can start doing this right now. Maybe you maybe you want to buy a home, um, but you're waiting for the full family. You can you can change that belief system right now by setting that money aside through every paycheck, even if you're living at your parents. Like you're able to coach these people and help them out through your social media platform by changing their beliefs, your personal beliefs, maybe something that you believe that, hey, stop renting from an apartment. You're wasting money if that's a personal belief that you have. Or if you believe in renting, then talk about renting like, hey, you should be renting at an apartment. Um, something inspirational is maybe something that uh, your clients have wrote comments about you or Google reviews. Read some of the reviews. You know, Jacob, I loved how he how personable he was and blah, blah, blah. And it's literally just you reading that review. Super easy content. Tips, myths. These are things that I always push to people. Um, because you're the expert at it. Um, so it's something that I'm a big fan of. And then the other one that I'm a big fan of helping people out is building their bio of how to address yourself, how to talk to yourself in a, in a good framework. Um, so when people ask you questions, hey, what do you do? You know how to introduce yourself in a very good framework. Um, and so these are these are just tips that I think are really helpful for social media, for people building content and not getting stagnant. So if you, you know, oh, I don't know what to record this month. You can look at your matrix and go, oh, okay, I'm on first home buyers. Let me talk about a objective on first home buyers. It already bullets you down to, hey, what you need to do. And then using Karuvi and other things can really help you out. So like now you have multiple ways to make content and it's not like, oh, I got to think of this on the spot. Yeah. So that's my biggest tip on people on how to make content and how to keep that there. Perfect. And then last question, we're going to wrap this up so we can start answering some of the questions somebody put. It's comforting to see when techs have pro or pros have tech issues. So all the time. That's a good, that's funny. So, all right. So last question is, so if agents decide. Jacob, you, you froze. You froze. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's having some. Yes. Technology is not perfect. Am I freezing? Yeah, yeah, and you're a little pixelated too. Yeah, I just thought it was never good. Last question before I freeze again is if an agent decides to use a video expert like you, somebody to edit their video that they're recording, what is, is that better? I, I think I think you know where you're is going. Better? So kind of how to explain how to edit it or what the, like the whole purpose. Can you hear me? No, you're kind of choppy, but I think I know where you're going is how if they okay. if they want to just send out video for me to edit, how okay, would they... I, Answer the last two questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to me, I think if you went out and you record stuff with your phone, if you bought the gimbal to make everything stabilized, you bought good audio, and you just want to send that video out, the best way to do that is to make notes while you're doing it. So, or even after the fact, like take the time to take the notes and go, hey, I like this video from this point to this point. I like this from this point to this point. I really trying to, I want to make a good tour video of the house. And so I went around the house with my phone. And I did a quick tour video. Uh, what I would probably ask sometimes is, hey, record a quick intro with your phone. Just saying, hey, this is an amazing home, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I can always take that intro part, your audio, and then cut up pieces to the house. And so having good information on your end on what you're trying to accomplish would be super helpful. Uh, what's always the worst is when people just send you video after video and they have no vision behind it. So if you had a vision behind what that video is trying to look like, then maybe a quick um, option of, or a quick like inspirational clip. Hey, I like this video. How can I make this with these clips? Um, and if you have it, then I can do that. And if you don't have it, then I can coach you. Hey, do next time you're at a house, try to record it this way um, and make sure you have your microphone on. 
Um, so those are things that I'm a big fan of. The more the more you can communicate with your editor, the more the better results are going to be. Um, because it doesn't it's not hard to do that. It's just it's hard when it's unclear from the very beginning. And that's right. where it's like maybe hour can build up or more time can build up. And so you're paying more hours for something that could have been done in like 30 minutes. Um, so taking the time to think about what you're doing, plan how you want to shoot it, and then how to communicate that to your editor. Uh, to me, those are the biggest things you can do. If you can just over communicate, you'll, you'll, you'll be winning. And then what are some tips when they're looking for somebody? So no matter who they go with, what are some things they should be asking their video video editor before they choose one? Um, so it's funny. So this year I have the opportunity to go into a big content creator. These are influencers what you'll call, and they're all in the market space. So they talk about LLCs and debit card, debit card cred and all kinds of stuff, how to buy a home. That's what they, their whole niche is. And so I got invited to the room and it was really, really cool. And I asked one of them, Hey, how do you find editors? Cause you make a lot of content. And he said this, he said, we hire three to four editors for the same project. Um, it can be easily persuaded if you're doing a Zoom call or if you're looking at their bio on Fiverr and go, oh, this guy's amazing. Let me hire them. But then you see their work and it's like, this is not what I wanted. So what they do is they take the bullet and say, hey, we're going to chart. We're going to hire three, three editors to do one project. And we're looking at who can do it faster, who can communicate what we want, and then who has the banging video. Um, and that's quote unquote his version of what he said. He said banger video. So I wanted to make sure I quote that. Um, and so what he does is that once they get the videos, they know, OK, this person was late. So we're never hiring them again. This person did a poor job. We're never hiring them again. This person did an amazing job. We're going to keep him in the docket and make sure that we have him for different projects. And okay. so they do that annually and they'll just hire people. And it is one of those things that it sucks because you're you have to pay you know, 30 bucks every time for editors or 50 bucks every time for editors. Um, but if the goal is to become really good on social media and have these amazing videos, then it kind of does work out. And it's really good to weed out the bad editors. So taking that time to do it is really great. If you have a friend that's like in your area that is an editor, sit with them, communicate with them what you want, and then coach them to be the editor that you want, if that makes sense. Like some of these young people that are starting off editing, they don't have a lot of skills or a lot of talent, but they know they have the hustle for it. So being able to sit with them at a coffee shop and say, hey, I want to do this. This is what I'm trying to do. And then allow them the creativity to do it. Don't micromanage over them because as a creator, I don't like being micromanaged. But as a business owner, I want to make sure that you're happy with your with your work. So give me the freedom to work, but also give me the borders on how you want your videos to look. And so I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. So let's start going to some of the questions. So if you guys want to start asking, I see a couple um, that were asked. So go ahead and start um, including those. So somebody put, what makes a good video that you are storing? Um, it, it has to be like Did you hear me? almost purposeless. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. I keep seeing my wife's phone yeah. add up on the top, so I don't know. If I, I think that's what was, I was disconnecting from my microphone because it would automatically select it. I think the system has, have, is, is kind of doing that. I've noticed that too, but keep going. Yeah. We have to fix that okay, somehow. Cool. I, I think to me, it has to be like um, a video with no real big purpose. And so I do this with my wife when she's doing like content for her real estate page. I'll stop her and say, hey, just work on your computer and I'm just record you. And so she'll just sit on the computer, fake working, and I record her. Um, yesterday when you guys had a zoom call, I recorded her for a bit. Um, and so like not acting, but like working is a really good base because people like to see that you're doing something, but you can also add that into maybe like an inspirational audio. Um, you can add it real quick to like the really trendy ones where it's just a music and you're just like pointing at stuff. So like you don't actually have to point, but if you're working and you have space above your head for text or even over your face, like put three tips for marketing. Like, you know, you can do those things over your video. Um, so anything that's not really specific to buying a home or for me, like if I don't have my camera in my hand, if I have a camera in my hand, then I typically kind of don't use that as an RVR because it's for that. And so right. when I do my production days, I plan to make videos, at least five or six RVRs where you can use it multiple times and it's going to work out. 
Yeah, and you see people do time lapse videos all the time where they just set it, record what they're doing, it speeds through. So you can do a day in a life of, you know, all those yeah. type of things. I mean, you can easily do it where you set your phone up and you go to like if you're doing an open house, you set your phone up and just take a quick moment to sweep the floor because sometimes the contractors leave the floor dirty. You take the time and it shows that, hey, this person takes he cares about what he's doing. So he's cleaning up after himself. And it's just an easy video to record. You don't have to talk. You don't have to do anything. The purpose is I take care of my house when, when I do an open house. You know, like it's, okay. it's, the, it's it writes itself. Okay. So the next one, which I'm pretty sure we'll all weigh in on this one. Yeah. What gets you more leads? Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube? Because they're all different, but... It, it really, it really depends. I'm a big fan of Instagram and I know people tell me all the time to get on TikTok. I don't like doing multiple apps, so I don't do it. Um, that's just me personally, but I've seen people grow on Instagram. I've seen people grow on TikTok. Obviously TikTok is a little bit more popular right now, but I'm a big fan of YouTube overall. I think, especially if you're doing like, if you're paying someone to make your, like a, a nice video for your house, a tour video, put that on YouTube. If you're YouTube are now doing digital shorts. You can now upload those as shorts. Um, so like, I think YouTube is a real big one. And then obviously it's the second biggest search engine in the world. Exactly. It, it just yeah, I, I definitely want to jump on this one. It's not about the platform, guys. You can get leads anywhere. It's about the content that you write. Who is your audience? I've been a marketing consultant for over 10 years. Every single thing work. Our, we have agents in our group on TikTok. Brand new agent from Cape Coral, Florida. He's a retired firefighter, okay? This person grown his TikTok in seven months to 40,000 following. He has multiple deals, multi-million dollar leads. Right now he has four land deals listed, all from TikTok. Only thing he does is TikTok. Because of the uncertainty with TikTok and policy right now and, and bureaucracy, he's kind of he's transferring into YouTube as well. So he has he's transferring his fan base and he's doing a really good job of dripping people with, hey, did you guys hear that TikTok actually got pulled into a, uh, the courtroom yesterday? They might come down, you never know, but why don't you guys follow me on Instagram? So yeah. and follow me on YouTube. So that's really smart. And YouTube, remember, Think about the platform and create content for that platform. Your audiences are everywhere. What we looked at in 2023, there are 4.8 billion people on in the world using social media. That's impressive. Your audiences, they're on social media. Go talk to them. Put up content that reach them. And you get a ton of information you want today. So, And mm. Juan, you touched on it just when you started to answer this question is that you even said it's not um, – and to me, that's why I automatically go to these platforms. It's not about having, you like to just use one platform. People think they need to be on everything. Choose the platform that you feel the most comfortable. Not yeah. what you think works, because like I said, they all work. Choose one or two and go at it rather than thinking that you need to be on all of them. And that's yeah. the biggest mistake I think a lot of people make in the space is that they think that they're missing out by looking at somebody else's work. Figure out what works for you and go all in. Well, the problem is that we're, we jump on social media and we're looking at the top influencers. If you go on YouTube, you're looking at the top search people. That's their livelihood. That's their business. They have to try all these different platforms because that's what they do. We're, we're not, that's not what I do. My whole life put is not on Instagram. It's not on TikTok. Um, it's working with other entrepreneurs and different businesses. Like, and it's the same thing for you. Your business isn't there. It's just how you can help get new leads. And so like, that's how I look at it. It's, it's, um, it's a business as It's a business tool that I use. Uh, I like to call it, it's the new digital handshake. And so like yeah. Instagram is the new digital handshake or TikTok is a new instant digital handshake. Like that's all that is. You, you can do that by inviting someone to go get a cup of coffee. Like it doesn't have so, to be. This. So true. And I think also with, with this platforms, we think that, remember you asked, how do we get leads? Do you have the right call to action? Do you have a lead mm -hmm. capture does somebody visit your instagram do you know exactly who visited and can you pull them to your database that's the problem that i see people having is that everyone has problem with social media and how to get leads but how are you going to get leads if you have nobody to capture them every single post that you're doing needs to capture them into your database so that you can nurture them so if you don't have that call to action if you don't have your website that's capturing them every single step that they do on your website needs to capture them immediately into into your database and if you need help with that come to our trainings we have tons of videos on this on our YouTube, so stay connected there. And somebody has a question in here about all the tools that Juan mentioned. We're going to put a PDF, a list of it in our Facebook group, and we'll put a link to it. So I'll put a link to our Facebook group. Come there, join there, and we'll, we'll uh, put it there. 
And we also put the blog article that he created. So that's already in there as well. Perfect. And that has the links. It should work. Um, and as soon as you write to the Amazon link, I, I use Amazon because it's the quickest and they're everywhere. Um, <laughs> that's fine. But if you don't like Amazon, you can go to b &H Photo or Anorama, Anorama or whatever. Awesome. Before awesome. we wrap this up, are there any other questions? Last chance to ask one. Yeah, and somebody asked, so you store stock on B-roll. So absolutely, even if you're going for a walk with your dog, remember your content isn't just you being in front of the computer, you writing an offer, or you're doing a showing. I know Juan was referring to a lot of real estate specific, but remember, you're selling a lifestyle. If you're having a coffee in your local coffee shop, that's content. If yeah. you're going for a walk with your dog in the morning to the park, that's content about your community. I live in Toronto right by the Rogers Center. Anytime the Blue Jays are in town, Anytime I have to take my kids for a walk and they're putting up the flags, I'm like, Blue Jays are coming. The season's coming. I'm promoting a live attraction. I'm promoting the community. So start to think about everything and anything to do with somebody's lifestyle and how them moving to this area is going to change for them. So whether it be the waterfront, whether it be the next park next door, whether it be the community center, the school, anything yeah. that you're walking by or involved in, that's content. Yeah, and especially I think as realtors and, and in that space, you guys have the best opportunity because you're selling that space. You're selling that city, that the community. And so like, even if there's not a good coffee shop in your town, there's probably a good one 15 minutes up the road. So talk about that. Talk about the school districts, all the stuff that you guys know. And that's why like, you guys are the expert at this. Like you, once you take that matrix and you like start filling that out, you're going to be able to see like everything I do could be a post. And not that like social media has to run your life, but it's one of those things that you can just set your phone off to the side and start recording um, and don't get trapped by, oh, this doesn't look perfect. Instagram, TikTok, they don't care. They just want to contact and they want to be entertained. Um, they want to learn something. It, it's funny how many times my family would send me Instagram videos on something or TikTok videos on something. And I'm just like, this looks horrible. But yeah, I look at the views and they're like 1.3 million likes. And I'm like, people don't care anymore. Um, my, my only concern, and this is the analogy that I have for different people is if you invite me to your house to watch a football game or watch the blue Jays, you're probably going to clean up the common areas. You're going to make sure the guest restroom has a toilet paper. It's clean. <laughs> but if you're selling that house, you're going to make sure every square foot of that house is nice and clean. And so the type of work that you're trying to persuade, uh, trying to push, it does matter on video content. So if you're trying to sell a package or you're trying to sell like a webinar or you're trying to sell something, content that you can sell, hire somebody because you're going to hold them accountable for the video quality, for the audio, for the overall vision of that thing. But if you're just doing a quick video, this is the best tool. And so like, yeah, video matters, but it matters at certain times. And so that's where I think like there's both. There's a balance. Absolutely. And Jacob, why don't you wrap this up? Mention how they can partner with us, the opportunities to work with us. We even put once our company as well as his social media, support him, check out his content, get inspired by the stuff that he shares. And thank you, Juan, for just being here. And, uh, and Jacob, why don't you wrap it up by mentioning Karubi as well? Because I think that's just a tool because Juan actually mentioned and reminded me it's actually the very tool that you guys are it seem to be interested in and struggling with. So that could help you out. Yeah, definitely. So the first thing is, if you could throw that link in there, if you go to fridayconnect.net, there's a marketing resource section. So everything that we offer is in there. And um, everybody that joins our group inside of our brokerage EXP Realty, you get access to all of these trainings for free. Um, no extra cost or split. So we also, um, Tharmila and I co-partnered and co-created uh, this platform called Karuvi Social, which will definitely help you in the form of getting content idea for videos, for your social media, you'll never run out of content. It's basically a daily content planner that gives you daily strategy, daily copy, optimized hashtags, call to actions, everything you need to get your real estate business and social media on autopilot. Because most realtors spend two to four hours a day docking other realtors, trying to figure out what works for them. And like Juan said, you're looking at people that have huge followings. One thing that I wanted to throw in there, now it's kind of freezing, was that your following doesn't really matter, the number. So if you see people with six to 8,000 in your area, it doesn't matter. You could have 1,000 followers, 800, and still generate leads because it's about the quality of the people that are following you. And Kruvi is designed to target your target audience 
to promote your local community, to make you the go-to person. So if you're interested in that, click on there. There is a free basic version so you can get a feel for it. We have a monthly plan. Right now we're running a lifetime subscription and there's a masterclass on it so you can go watch it and even get a promo code to save more money. So take a look at those things. But if you want to get access to these, um, these things for free, be coached by marketing professionals like ourselves, hit that uh, uh, partner with us. Everything that we offer in our group is in there. You can even schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with us to even learn more and see with what you're currently doing at your brokerage, how you can make and do even more at our brokerage. So I encourage you to go check that out. I encourage you to register for next week. These are free events. So invite all the people you want. Um, we bring in professionals every week. You can register up to four weeks in advance. Uh, make sure you register for each individual one because you will get a different link each week. And uh, I encourage you to do that. If there's anything that we missed, reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. And um, that's it for me. So is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, Ros Rosanne asked, I work in school as a substitute teacher. And is there anything that I can film there? Absolutely. Definitely, Chris. Not the kids. But remember, you're not. don't film anybody in any of your content unless if they're your client and they give you consent. Always get permission from anybody. Even the properties that aren't your listings. We talk about this in a lot of our training. Even if you're a brand new agent starting today and if you don't have a listing, you can use other people's listing, again, with consent and permission, which is super easy to do. Just message your broker, message the, the, the your brokerage colleagues who have a listing because you are pretty much helping them find a listing, a, a buyer, right? And helping them promote. So they're going to be okay with that one. And to Roxanne, here's a couple of examples that you can spend this. Right before you start your class, you're probably prepping. Do a quick story. Hey, guys, getting ready for it. Because now people are getting to know you. Wow, she's a teacher. She's surrounded by family. She's well-connected. Right. And the people, and I don't know about you, but majority of the kids are going to try to find you online, whether you like it or not, and their parents are going to follow follow you. So you have to be a role model. And they're yeah. going to now be your realtor. So when their cousin, their sister, brother is looking for a realtor, they're going to be like, oh, my, my daughter's teacher is one. And trust me, my husband works at a hospital, and his boss's boss is a realtor too and you have no idea how many deals she gets from hospital even though she's not directly promoting herself because of conflict of interest so what you can do is not even promote the school or the name of the school but you can film somehow in front of the school before after while you're prepping with no kids being there and even a little story about the classroom area i'd be like look what i did today guys i'm doing a, a really cool thing for my kids that shows that you're creative, that you went out of your way to problem solve. It tells you that you're super interactive and that if I'm a mom and I am a mom, I have two little kids. And if I see that, I'm going to be like, I really like this person. She's super cool. And yeah. also she's super creative and she cares about her children. It just shows your value as a person because they they don't work differently. They they work together. The, the person that you are and who you are as a business person, the mm -hmm. value. And I was actually talking to Rose about this today. Your your wife won in our, our recording that's coming on our YouTube about, about this and your identity and that your work isn't very different than who you are as a person. So that's yeah. actually a really, really good question you asked. So if any of you do anything outside of being a real estate agent, tap into that. I always, if you go on my Instagram right now, you'll see that I talk about baseball. My husband and I actually, we met at the Blue Jays game. We worked for 13 season for the Blue Jays. We live right by the Rogers Center. Of course, I talk about the Rogers Center. I talk about my kids us hanging out by the waterfront people you have no idea how many people direct message me and ask me hey what is it like living right in the middle of downtown with young kids you won't believe it it and that is a type of thing you want from people no one's going to message you and be like i want a three bedroom two washroom house can you buy it for me and people are going to ask you by asking you questions and 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 a conversation starter and so share to some extent whatever you're comfortable with, some aspect of who you are in your personal life without giving too much away because that's, you know, it, you want to be careful about privacy and also safety of yourself and others. But there's an extent where people need to get to know you because remember, they're not working to find just a house. They're working to build a relationship. Trust me, 90% of the time, people, and you'll be surprised. Have you ever heard of, we see this all the, all the time on Facebook groups where somebody's maid of honor or best friend didn't choose them as a realtor. Some people might not, you're too close to the fire. They don't, it, you get open about personal stuff and finances and they don't want to work with your aunt because you, your family and they don't want to know your finances. You need to respect that. But you'd be surprised how many strangers I might want to work with you, but that's because they need to get to know you. So going back to once, um, you know, what he alluded to, no like trust factor, but great yeah. question, by the way, because that's, that's being awesome. Consistent is the number one thing. Just being consistent on social media, on any platform, being consistent. 
because you're going to, your audience will find you. They will eventually find you. And it's funny that you brought up the substitute teacher. Um, there's this comedian that I follow and he's a substitute com- a substitute teacher. And he talks about how rude and how funny these kids are. Um, you know, he does it in his car after school, but he talks about that. And one of those videos I found, cause I, I love comedians and I found it and I just started following him and started listening to it. And it's, some of the stories he he has about his students, and it's all in love. It's not like he's dogging these kids. It's all in love, but it's just how honest and how true these kids are, how much they make fun of him, and it, it's so funny. So, like, anything that in your life that you feel like you can talk about on social media can be done, um, and your audience will find you. Like, it's, it's just, just – it's going to happen. And remember, I mean, we're in this digital world, especially after COVID. People are just looking to connect, and so I think that's why video took the way it did, where it's so kind of rough – is because people want this authentic because there's ads everywhere. Everybody wants to connect with somebody. And so this is the perfect way for you to start building rapport with your audience and do that pull marketing where they're coming to you. And because remember, if you pick up the phone and you cold call them, you have to start building that rapport. But if they feel like they already know you, it makes it your job so much easier when you finally do pick up the phone to follow up with that lead. Now they know how you are. They know how you talk. They know something personal about you. And not enough realtors make their social media personal. Honestly, your social media, no matter what you're showing, whether it's a house or anything, should somehow be personal to you. 80% personal and 20% real estate and fluff. You'd be surprised how many people follow you. Because I think a lot of people focus on, I need to find somebody that's ready to buy now, now, now. Not thinking six months from now, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I follow a realtor. You know, Mm -hmm. you're warming that audience up over time. So keep those things in mind. This is a perfect way. And honestly, you said something really great that I just thought about was we actually realtor, realtors, that's realtors and real estate agents and one. We're in the perfect industry for content. If you think about doctors, lawyers, construction workers, they can't really talk about the community a lot. We're the only people that everything is freaking content. Because it has to do with where we're living. So content, when people say, I don't know what to post, it's kind of like you can post anything, honestly. Yeah. It ties back to the area. So we have it a lot easier. So just get more creative. Just even if you don't think it can be content recorded anyways. I mean, you can do farmer's market. You can do, I mean, there's so many different things that you could do about your community. And it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to put those events together. <laughs> the city's already doing it. Like, yeah. I mean, I I feel like we could talk about this all day. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says realistor. <laughs> your loyalty to Chris. Hey, it looks better when you write it out. Yeah, it looks way better when you write it. That you're trying to just collapse words together. I do it all the time. So yeah. we talk so know? fast, right? Jacob and I talk. If you go see some of my YouTube videos too, there's some days I'm like, "What did I just say?" Because I, my mind is going 20 times faster, and my mouth is trying to catch up, and it's like, "Blah blah blah." But honestly. Way. You're so right, Jacob. When it comes to content, like you could literally make a content about cutting mushroom and you're making a pasta dish and talk about where you got that pasta and mushroom from. Content. Like yeah. all you have to Making do is bread. every time you go outside, every time you do anything, think about can this and just relate it back to real estate, relate it back to your community, relate it back to what you do, call to action. And not everything has to be like buy my, you know, buy a property with me. It's just it's about it's talk, connect with me, like this, like this business tag the business that's what karubi platform does is that our social media content that jacob and i put together and created is exactly that we take everything and anything into content all specifically made for real estate agent and it comes with pre-written already done optimized keywords hashtags so make sure you check it out and it's a and it's a free platform if you if you connect with us and you work with us and if you don't and you're part of our brokerage and no problem everything we do you can still that's why we invite everybody from our brokerage to come here because you can still get access to everything from us as well and connect with us work with us so thank you uh honest honestly it's been an honor to have you here one it's so good to finally get to be in a room with you and you're such a great communicator you're brilliant you're super smart and honestly i don't know who's more like you're you want a rose like you guys are just a perfect pair and it <laughs> honestly well, it's someone asked me that recently he's like when you guys got married did you knew you were going to be like such a great couple and i was like no not no. at all uh, the universe knew the universe knew the universe knew yeah yeah yes 
uh, honestly, it's been an honor. Thank you for being here. We're definitely going to bring you back. This has been a great content. We're constantly talking to the people that are in our group about the content that they want to see. And it's so great for all of you being here. Thank you for communicating. Thank you for being active. This is the best way you can get content out. And, and we stayed a little longer than we usually do, but it's it's been a great conversation. And thank you, Jacob, for hosting and asking all the questions. It's been awesome. Stay connected, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace out. Bye, guys.